sorry, we had some echo. Okay. Um, welcome everybody to the age appropriate and developmentally appropriate work group meeting. Um, the second. We appreciate you being here today and your commitment and your dedication to this work. Thank you so much for being here with us. Um, again, a few housekeeping requests, the same as we did last week. Um, unless you are a work group member, please keep yourself on mute until the end of our meeting. At that time, there will be an opportunity for the public to provide any comments. So today, um, I don't believe we'll need any introductions today because um, we did have all of our work group members with us last week. And again, my name is PJ Duncan. Um, I am the STEM director at the Department of Education and facilitating the work group. Uh, we're going to quickly review our purpose, talk about last week, and then continue on for this week and finally wrap up with uh, public comments. If you are a work group member, you can feel free to, um, you know, unmute, share your camera and comment at any point. So again, uh, <clears throat> just as a review from last week, uh, there are two main purposes that have been identified for the for this work group. Within the context of Section 100.428C of the Florida statutes, this work group will define age appropriate and developmentally appropriate. And again, just as a reminder, these definitions will provide consistency within all of the Florida school districts to meet the statute and for communication with parents and other external stakeholders. Um, again, uh, we are um, beginning this work from House Bill 1557 which included the language classroom instruction by school personnel or third parties on sexual orientation or gender identity may not occur in kindergarten through grade three or in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students in accordance with state standards. Our final item for review is our success criteria. So we know that our work is grounded within these two criteria. Um, so I think it's worthwhile to start the meeting by um, making sure we're all clear on that criteria. Um, the first being to provide a clear proposed definition for Florida school districts, parents, and other stakeholders to ensure the application of Section 1001.428C Florida statute with fidelity. And secondly, um, reflect upon the feedback from stakeholders to ensure that the interest of Florida's diverse student population and public school districts are accounted for. So that will allow us to move into our meeting minutes um, from last week. Again, if you, um, well, maybe not again, but if you see that I've missed anything, I would certainly appreciate um, a reminder. These are high level minutes, um, certainly not detailed in any in any way, um, but we did have the inter introduction of work group members last week. Um, Christopher Combass from Hamilton, Kelly Brower from Marion, Dr. Glenda Sheffield from Palm Beach, and Leah Torres from Osceola. We went through the purpose and success criteria that we just reviewed. Um, we, we reviewed our timeline and our important milestones. Um, we're working towards having a final draft completed by November 5th. 
um, and having a fully approved um, uh, definition by December 5th. Um, you have to have a timeline when you're doing anything, so we may have to adjust. Um, but as of right now, we have three scheduled meetings to meet that deadline. Um, we last week we talked about our reading assignment for the next meeting to be held today. Um, we had a brief discussion and some clarifying questions among the work group. We have public comment and questions. And um, our follow up for the week was that we realized that we would need to keep note of all research that was utilized and any experts that are consulted um, as that information will be available to the public as requested. Um, and we did follow up the meeting last week with a reminder um, via email to the work group members to remind them to keep note of that research should they consult any um, prior to this meeting. Okay, so we can get to work. Um, I believe what we'll do today is we're going to have the work group members uh, um, unmute and share your uh, camera so we can have a discussion. Uh, what I would like to talk to you about before we begin is what I will be doing. Um, as we are going through today, our goal is going to be to develop some um, draft language. Uh, we have to have some language to begin with, therefore, so that we can work with the language um, and have something to provide feedback upon for one another. Uh, so that is what I'm going to be trying to do. I, we are recording this call, but I'm also going to be working to take notes um, throughout our two readings. And, um, and if we have called upon any additional research this week, this will be a good time to share it. We'll also follow up this call with an email so you guys can share any links. Um, so don't be worried that you have to share all that right now. We'll get we'll we'll get that right after the call today. So um, we are going to um, move over here as we work to draft some proposed definitions. So I'll just open the floor up for our work group members and any initial thoughts that we have today. Ms. Duncan, this is Chris Combes. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah, you gave us a very challenging homework assignment is all I can tell you. Um, I didn't do any outside research. I did get some input from some of our stakeholders here within the district. Um, I, I was able to talk with one of our social workers on the elementary campus. Um, when trying to develop a definition for, for age and developmentally appropriate, um, it can be subjective, especially depending on the area that you live in. Um, so I was curious to see, you know, talk with some of the, the larger districts here just to kind of get their input. Um, just to see if anyone was able to kind of come up with a, a basic definition for this. Um, something that is, I guess, generally accepted uh, across the board. Uh, from school districts. Uh, we, we definitely, when we look at material, we're looking at material that is research based uh, for sure. Um, but yeah, with age appropriate, I, I know that definitely that's something that uh, parents and community members can often um, define maybe better than than the school system. So I'm just curious to see, you know, what some of the other members thought about that. Um, so this is Kelly Brower from Marion. Um, <clears throat> I did do some outside research. Um, I was able to find um, a definition that uses an or for age appropriate or developmentally appropriate from Oregon. And I'll just read it. It's only a few sentences, but 
age appropriate or developmentally appropriate activities means activities or items that are generally accepted as suitable for children of the same chronological age or level of maturity or that are deemed determined, excuse me, to be developmentally appropriate for a child based on the development of cognitive, emotional, physical, and behavioral and social capacities that are typical for an age or age group. In the case of a specific child, age appropriate or developmentally appropriate activities means activities or items that are suitable for the child based on the developmental stages attained by the child with respect to the cognitive, emotional, physical, behavioral, and social capacities of the child. Um, so that gives us some verbiage and words that we could wordsmith from. I also um, got some research from Penn State and from the National Association for the Education of Young Children, who states that developmentally appropriate practice is informed by what we know from theory and literature about how children develop and learn and that developmentally appropriate practice requires both meeting children where they are, which means that teachers must get to know them well and enabling them to reach their goals that are both challenging and achievable. Um, so there's some other things I highlighted from Penn State, but th that was just capturing some verbiage that's been used in prior definition. I have a, a, a question back to the Kelly, the definition from Oregon. I, I did. I know they did on that definition. They had age and developmentally appropriate or age. Did they have those distinguished between the two? They have it as an or. So oh, age appropriate or. or developmentally appropriate. But I was playing around with it um, over the weekend, and I definitely think we could do it either way, like an and or, or come up with a definition for either. Um, they just clumped it together with the or. Um, well, um, well, first of all, let me just make a comment to, to Chris Combass. I agree that this was a difficult homework assignment. Um, and so I'm very thankful that you guys are here to work on this because it it is a it is a very challenging task at hand. Um, so um, I, I I do I do appreciate you very very much for, for for putting in the work between last week and this week to be you know prepared for this time together. I'm not sure because I know that we had a work group member possibly two that we're not going to be able to join us today. Jim, can you tell me, are, are we, are, is it just Kelly and Chris with us today or? Yes. Okay, all right. I didn't want to exclude um, Leah or Glenda uh, by accident. I can't see all the participants on my screen. Um, okay, so uh, Chris, after hearing what uh, Kelly had to offer from um, her research from this week and from a slightly uh, larger or considerably larger district perspective. Do you have any um, thoughts? Yeah, I appreciate Kelly putting the work in to, to get that definition. Did, Kelly, did you say that the first uh, definition provided was that from uh, Oregon? Um, website and the second was from Penn State. Yeah, so the first one's from Oregon.gov and I sent um, Miss Duncan <laughs> um, both of my links so that she would have that for public record um, yeah. earlier this week. And then um, Penn State, Penn State uses the article that I was referring to uses the work of um, Copel, Carol and Sue Bredekamp and they wrote uh, developmentally appropriate practice in early childhood programs serving children from birth through age eight. So it was a good age range for the for the statute and HB uh, 1557 that we're referring to. Um, it does go on to further define child development appropriateness as child development follows general sequential patterns 
and is interrelated across domains, cognitive, physical, social, and emotional. So there's some more uh, verbiage there that may be appropriate when we look to actually come up with the definitions. Normally when I talk about age appropriate and, and developmentally appropriate, I, I normally combine the two together. I, I've heard you mention something age appropriate or developmentally appropriate. Um, and I know that that when you look at the house bill, um, I don't know if, if the purpose was to combine those together or if that's two separate things. I know you're looking more at the cognitive ability for the developmentally appropriate. Um, I, I think regardless of how we um, come up with the definition, I really like the wording that, that you were able to find, uh, Kelly, if we could maybe simplify that a little bit. Um, I think regardless, the definition is probably going to still be subjective in the end, depending on who's reading it. Um, because, you know, we're in North Florida, a small school district. Um, how we perceive things here could be a little different than how someone down the state or in a larger district perceives things. Now, I will say this. We're kind of more on the same page today than we used to be with social media and the Internet. And, you know, I think our kids are exposed to a lot of the same content, regardless of where they're from. Um, definitely from from Hamilton County standpoint, you know, we try to. Um, cover the basics when it gets to our uh, instructional materials, definitely follow the law with when it comes to uh, not um, teaching any material K through three when it comes to uh, sexual orientation or gender identity. Um, and then it and then it gets a little cloudy after that when you start looking at these definitions. So I, I think it's I'm glad that Ms. Duncan was able to put this work group together because I think it's important that we come up with a definition that we can all understand and something that would kind of guide our practice moving forward. Yes, so in speaking to HB 1557, the language in um, Paragraph three, if you're so to call it a paragraph, classroom instruction uh, by school personnel, it does use um, is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate. So in the actual house bill, they actually do use or. So, I mean, I will leave it up to Ms. Duncan's discretion, of course, and uh, those at the DOE as to whether or not we can define it as age appropriate or developmentally appropriate, or do we need to define each separately? Um, but to answer your question, it does use or. Well, my thought would be that, you know, to con convening this work group was to be able to, um, to make that determination. I, I think we have the uh, um, we have the ability to either divide, define them separately or to bring them together and as they're written in House Bill 1557 as an or. Um, do you think that? I, I've been thinking along these lines. Do we think that? Um, there's any uh, pros or cons versus separating them out independently from one another. Um, is there anything that could be, you know, can we think of any unintended consequences if we combine those two terms with the word or? I've, I've been thinking this through quite a lot in my mind, so I'd be interested to hear what you guys think about that. So I do think that there are times when we could look at something strictly as age appropriate. However, we may have students that are of age but are still not developmentally appropriate. Mm -hmm. So I do believe that's where the or would benefit us is in that area of you need to think of it on two prongs and not two separate prongs because a child might meet the age but might not be developmentally appropriate you know developmentally mature enough or whatever um, to handle what is deemed to be age appropriate 
um, I do worry about the vice versa, that someone makes the determination that they are mature in their development, but they're not at an age. So that's where I don't want to get a district in trouble in mm -hmm. making that determination. So I think that's something we need to think about is what best sets up district discretion. And of course, you know, the districts then have to roll it downhill. And by time it gets to the classroom teacher for instruction and any uh, any type of, of instructional materials that they may be finding to use by themselves, um, that we've set everybody up for success. So that's my only concern with OR. I can see it both ways, but um, I try to think of the what's best going to you know um, safeguard our districts and our school board in determining what is appropriate to be used in the classroom. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I'm kind of leaning toward using the word or since I've, I've heard the definition that you provided, Kelly, just because in thinking about our kids with special needs and we do have a growing uh, ELL population within uh, the district, uh, we know that sometimes those those even some of those older students may not be prepared to be uh, exposed to certain material. So um, I agree. I, I think it's important that the uh, the districts really look at the data and, and determine where their students are at um, when when choosing uh, the appropriate material. So. Yeah, I, I kind of like using the word or. Um, but. You know, I, I would be willing uh, to, to view those separately too. it, it just, you know, just however the, the group leans. And I just don't know since HB 1557 specifically uses or if we should stay with the language of the statute. And therefore, create a definition that stays with the language of the statute of the bill. Excuse me, it's not a statute; the bill, um, law, actually. Um, so maybe we should stay in agreement with that language of the bill of, of the law. Excuse me. <laughs> They're used to worrying about them as bills, and then they get signed, and whoop! Now it's a law. <laughs> um, well, I I guess. What I might propose is perhaps we start with uh, start with something similar to what we have, wh what you shared from Oregon, where they're using age or developmentally appropriate, and, and and agree to be you know cognizant of the fact that we need to to try to think ahead. It sounds like you guys already are thinking ahead to how a district's gonna you know, be charged with interpreting um, this guidance. And, um, you know, I I think it's really hard when you start to do this work to not kind of um, reflect back on your own personal teaching experience. Um, and so I, I know in, in my thoughts here, I have been able to identify in my thinking of students that I would have said, were um, were were of a certain age, um, but due to factors such as you know, um, if they're dealing with a significant learning disability, um, if they're you know, if depending on where they're at, they might not be developmentally ready, but they are age ready and vice versa. I've struggled with that all all this week. I was raised with my uncle who had Down syndrome, and I think about that a lot. He was, you know, he was certainly, um, uh, he certainly had aged and grew as an adult, but developmentally, you know, he was not there. So it's hard, it's kind of hard to reason out like those pros and cons and any unintended consequences. But I think if we agree today, that we could stay with the age or developmentally appropriate and maybe begin our work with the Oregon language to sort sort of try to 
you know, you have to have a starting point, not to say that we're going to use that language, but you have to have a starting point. And we can start with that language and try to, um, you know, look at it within the context of what we're doing here in Florida. And again, I, I love the fact that you shared that we've, we've really got to be cognizant of these districts who have to roll this out in their schools and make sure that we're providing clear guidance um, for them, set them up uh, for success and ultimately do what's best for the children, um, which is always our focus. Always, I know that this group's focus is on what's best for the children. Um, so, um, would you guys be okay if we work with that Oregon language and start to um, start to work from that as maybe a first draft? Kelly, would you mind putting that link in the chat for us? Um, do you have it? Do you, well, first I no, should. No, I have, it, I have it handwritten here. Okay. Let me just, rather than go and try to find it in email, let me just type it into the chat. Just bear with me while I type it. Oh, no, thank you. I will say um, in perusing many articles and whatnot this weekend, looking for a starting place, which was really what I was doing was what has somebody else already done right. <laughs> that we can start from because let's work smarter, not harder and recreate the will. I will say that <clears throat> it started to, the policy started to become redundant. Mm. So I didn't find the need to keep, um, citing particularly from each source because there seemed to be some type of agreement with what um i eventually decided i would uh deeply dive into it with oregon um it does seem to be um even in uh, looking at research from social workers and psychologists and whatnot, other people that have uh, an opinion on what is age appropriate, what is developmentally appropriate, it did start to have the same resounding language. So that kind of gave me um, some belief that we have something that we could work from. Certainly makes sense that there would be some uh, redundancy. Oh, that after 170, that's a dash, not an equal. I apologize. Don't you worry about a thing. I should have thought I, I saw your email and I didn't think I, I should have added that in our. Um, so it should have added that for us in advance. Full text paragraph. Five, and there's no page numbers. So the actual, oh my gosh, I don't know, that's rule. I don't know what's wrong with me, sorry, rule. Um, <clears throat> that's where the actual definition is, age appropriate, developmentally appropriate, which it does speak very clearly to um, the developmental stages attained by the child with respect to the cognitive, emotional, physical, behavioral, or social capacities of the child, which I believe is very um, neutral, safe language that we could use in regards to that developmental stage. I don't think that any of those terms are not going to be seen in a positive light of a child. I'm scrolling to see if I can find the definition so I can put them up and share for everybody. Is there a page number on that, Kelly? There is no page number. It's under the rule text, paragraph five. You want me to start typing the definition in here? I am so sorry for you. No, okay. Oh, page, somebody said page three. Okay. So, so they have let, page number. Let me They're probably up. live. I'm coming from a printed version, so it might have cut off the page number.
Kelly, is is the uh, the website? Oh, I see it. Okay. Is it Oregon Laws? Is that is that the website that you were able to find? It's Oregon.gov. Oregon.gov. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, somebody popped it in there. Oh, our guest, Rin. Thank you, Rin. He cut and pasted into the chat. Perfect. Okay, I believe I've got it on here for us. Let's see, make it a little bigger. My eyes are terrible. I would question if we could strengthen it instead of generally accept it. If there's some way of saying evidence based or as research based, but I would definitely need to do a little bit more homework there as to whether or not we can truly say that there is um, enough evidence or research. They're saying generally accept it. I'm going to go ahead and just. Um, Cut that out and put it into a Word document for us so that we can work on it. My apologies. I, I'm on this. Uh, um, I am on this smart board and it's not as convenient as being on your regular computer. And it's also very slow. But I'm almost there. So I can throw out um, some other language from Penn State, just why um, Ms. Duncan is getting that to work on the Word document. Um, at Penn State, they talk about um, developmentally appropriate practice requires both meeting children where they are and enabling them to reach their goals. It also talks about uh, teachers need to be attuned to the students as unique individuals and responsive to the social and cultural context in which they live, which I think speaks to your point, Chris, that we are very diverse across the state and we definitely have uh, different situations that students are being raised in. Um, it does go on also um, to speak to um, De okay, so best practice is based on knowledge, not on assumptions of how children learn and develop. So the research base yields major principles in human development and learning. So apparently um, Penn State did feel comfortable in speaking to research that there is research to support. Um, So developmentally appropriate practice is a comprehensive educational perspective that supports optimal healthy development for every child. Developmentally appropriate practice embraces both continue, um, continuity and change and continuity because it guides the tradition of quality and change as it incorporates new research and knowledge and science into children's development and learning. I mean, we could get really specific. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we want to pigeonhole the districts, but um, just throwing out more words, just trying to give words. Because for me, it's almost like create this word cloud and then wordsmith it down to a definition. That's that's how my mind works. And I I, I really just from hearing you um, provide those descriptions, I, I would love for us to be able to kind of merge those two definitions together. Um, because I, I think we are going to have to, you're right, maybe not be 
that specific, but I, I think it will have to provide some kind of definition that would be clear enough for a teacher to read and understand. Um, then, you know, for districts to be able to provide that oversight and that way we can all be consistent in how we approach this language. And I think too, you know, just to add on to that that point as well, there are other stakeholders outside of our our school lives in the district and the school um, that we want to make sure that we're clear and concise with them as well, um, so that everybody that's consuming this information feels like it's you know clear enough to understand and and clear enough that it doesn't. Uh, require a lot of interpretation so that everybody can be as, as much as possible at, at, on a, at the same understanding. Did you guys want me to do any edits to what we have on the screen now? I can go ahead. I think I heard that we did not, we, we were going to remove generally accepted and put I think I heard research base for, I mean, we're just working on a draft here, so um, we can certainly pull some of the language that um, Kelly just had, and I'll be glad to be the scribe and make edits and changes here um, as you see fit. I, I'm in agreement. I, I think we should put something in there. Um, regarding research based. Um, because, you know, we, we don't want um, teachers to to. Generally go find material from like teachers pay teachers or some site like that, that and not nothing's wrong with teachers pay teachers. I'm, I'm not saying that, but I'm, you know, we, we definitely want it to be material that um, is approved by districts and and typically when we're selecting material, it's it's going to have to be research based, standards based. Yeah, I like um, I think giving it research based gives it a little teeth and it also would allow a school board to do due diligence if they needed to for um, any other stakeholders like parents or um, community groups um, that they could. Um, support decisions based on research. I think that that's a good direction to go. I I agree, and I think to like if we're able to cite the research that we use, then I mean, as a parent, I think that would be, uh, you know, something interesting to dig into and to learn more about. Um, so, I, I'm uh, I I'm very appreciative of the um of the research that you've already been able to find. Ms. Duncan, is this something that I know the DOE has been great as far as uh, providing districts with suggested uh, social emotional materials and things like that? Do you foresee there being something out there that uh, some kind of I know you guys probably can't really make recommendations on materials, um, even if it's kind of like a share file between districts to where we can kind of see, you know, some of the materials that the other districts are using would be helpful for us. I know that's not kind of our task at hand today, but I'm just thinking ahead once we start getting into selection of materials that would be nice. Well, I think, you know, right now it, we've, we are, we are on this task. Um, I can say, you know, just as Florida is a local control state and districts make those resource choices for the what's best for their communities and their student populations. Um, at this at the same time, the department has always been very motivated to provide resources um, for our schools. So I'm, you know, I'm happy to make note of that and make sure that that's shared. Um, with leadership so that they're aware that that came up in our conversations. So I would suggest like I'm making notes to do more research on um, 
age appropriate or developmentally appropriate activities or items and that one organization we might want to uh, research a little more would be the National Association for the Education of Young Children. They do seem to have done some of this work already. So I'll just throw that out there. I'm making a note for myself to look there, but if others would like to look there as well. Um, I do believe it to be a credible source and they may have you know, done their due diligence, I'm sure. Could you repeat that again? Um, the National Association for what? Um, the National Association for the Education of Young Children. So basically they go from birth to age eight, which is <clears throat> obviously only one part of the audience because this definition is more broad than just K through three, but it might give us uh, roads to other research that we can dive into. Agreed. When, a, when approaching work like this, I have found that, just like you said, Kelly, when you start to dive into the research, it kind of lays a path out in front of you if you continue to push forward and read. Um, I So I will definitely, um, uh, I am going to be uh, adding all of this to our meeting notes so that everyone's aware of the research that we're using. And um, we'll continue to, uh, if you'll continue to send it to me via email anytime, you know, as you're reading, I'll compile a list. And as we had the meeting uh, minutes today in the presentation, I'll add a separate slide and we can start to populate in those, um, those sources. And um, I believe probably what would be the easiest is uh, if, if any um, one wants the links, they could just to cut down on the space on the um, presentation, I can just go ahead and provide. I'll I'll start a document I'll, uh, or a spreadsheet. One of the two, I'll work it out that it would be easy for me to share with somebody so they could go through the links as well. So I'll I'll work on that between now and next week, and then I can report back in our meeting um, about that as well. And I'll take this document here that we've started. Um, and we can just make this our working document. And I can, I believe I can link that to um, our meeting so that when we get on the meeting next week, anybody that uh, joins us can just kind of pull it up um, as well. I'll, I'll work on that between now and next week and certainly open to suggestions if, um, if, if I, uh, just try to keep us all on track and and understanding all of our thought. Um, is do you guys want to do any more work with this definition today, or do you want to? We do have uh, we do are going to need to provide time for public comment. So we and I we we could have three minutes of that or 10 minutes of that. I don't know. So um, we could stop here and um, and I can we can use this as our basis to begin or if we have anything else that you feel is pertinent today's to today's conversation before we are separated again to do our individual work, please feel free to share that now. I don't have anything else to share today and would be very receptive to hearing public comment as far as where we are right now so that we can do the due diligence to the public comment that we need to do um, over the weekend. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Um, I know for me, at least now that we've established kind of a foundation, um, I kind of have some ideas in mind of, of how I can do additional research on the links that were just mentioned. I think as we work toward next week, then we can come up with some uh, teacher and community friendly definitions of, for this and 
I'd be interested to hear what the uh, public has to say at this point. Well, for some reason, I cannot go back and share the presentation, but I'm going to tell you that it just simply said on the slide public comment. I don't want to hold us up because of that, but for some reason, the smart board has taken away that. So we'll just go ahead. I have my colleague here, Jim. He will be able to um, unmute and um, anybody that would like to provide public comment. And also, uh, please feel free to add anything to the chat if you would prefer to do that instead of um, uh, of talking. Okay, we have a hand up. No? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. If you would like to speak, raise your hand and Jim is going to, I looked over and I saw the hand waving at me. I thought it was you guys and then it wasn't. Um, if you don't mind, if you'll just raise your hand and we'll uh, make sure that you're set up to talk. And I'll also monitor the chat over here. If you've got anything to put in the chat, feel free to do so. OK, we have a question. Thank you for providing the wor working research you are using in the discussions. Are these presentations and materials being posted somewhere on the DOE website? Uh, not at this time, uh, but if you will please email me, uh, you will and I'll put because the PowerPoint has malfunctioned, I'll put my um, email address in the chat. I can send it to you. We'll confer with um, leadership um, about if we're going to house these materials. That hasn't been a, a point of discussion, so I need to clarify that. You're very welcome. Um, OK, we have another question. The organizations pushing for books to be removed from school libraries are explicitly asking for explicit guidance and reference to the statutes about books. On the uh, oh, in the other work group. Um, I'm not aware of the work in the other work group. Um, however, I can say for our purposes, we've been given a very clear um, task and goal to look at these definitions with as they appear or as the language appears in House Bill 1557, which out of that bill, that language is now law in 100.5. Or two, so that that's all that we are um, we are attending to in this work group, and you're welcome. I can see that someone's typing in the chat. OK, we have another comment. Um, please keep in mind that your definitions here will dramatically impact our LGBTQ plus students, families and educators. Yes, ma'am, we will. We are going to stay on until um, four o'clock to see if we have any more comments. 
Um, the actual work group work is complete. So if you you find that you're you know you're you're done, you can certainly um, exit. But we want to stay and make sure we've heard all the public comment. People may be having some think time. Would it be possible to get a link in this chat to the Penn State language that was discussed? Kelly, do you mind? Thank you. Thank you. What I've you can always learn something. So what I've learned today is that I should make sure that I have all the links that I get from the work group handy when we come to these meetings. So next week I'll have them primed in some form or fashion for us to um, have at hand, have on hand. My apologies. Thank you, Kelly. Um, the statute number is one zero zero point, excuse me, one zero zero one point four two. And it is, I thought I had this committed to memory, but I don't. So let me look. And that's going to be 1001.428C. So you're going to look for section 8C. Jim is working on the uh, connection, um, Ms. Cousins, right now. We don't see. We don't see her on the on the screen, so the connection may be on her end. Or his end, I'm sorry, I don't I don't know. Kelly, we have a note in the chat about can you set, resend the links? Neither of them work when I entered them. Jim's going to try here on our end just to see if we. We can get it. We're getting the same error. Um, we will. Please know if we if we exit this call and you have been unsuccessful, 
you simply need to get my um, email out of this chat and email me and I will make sure that I get um, a link to you. Um, I will confirm with Kelly that I have the right link before I send it. Oh, okay. She's put some corrective information in the chat. It might be helpful. But again, if you have a difficult time with um, accessing the information, just feel free to email me. And I'm going to, after this meeting, I'm going to try to gather all the information together into a common document for our records. And I can share that with you um, just as quick as I get it together. Kelly, is that is that the correct link that um, I posted? Looks like someone else maybe posted the same thing. Yeah, I'm in my computer trying to see if I can get it out of um, history. <laughs> so, working on it. It could be. We have another comment. Who will be the judge for age appropriate or developmentally appropriate? And will the research they mention include actual baselines on what is or is not appropriate because their definition is still subjective? Um, the task that we have is to gather as much research and understand the um, law and to provide a proposed definition. Um, beyond that, the, the rest of the process will, will, will not be a part of this work group, so I don't have enough information to provide you with a, a, a solid response. But I, but I, but I can, um, I can uh, say that we are going to we've, we've got this um, task and we're going to complete it and then um, then we'll be on to some more to more to more work to support the kids. OK, good. That link worked. Um, so thank you, Kelly for per and Chris for helping out with that. Next next week, I'm going to have those links in advance and on the ready. Well, it looks like our time together is coming to a close for this week. Um, we do have a meeting again next week. Um, what I would like to ask you now, if you don't mind, our, our ne meeting next week is on the 18th, 3 to 4 p.m., but I would like to know if uh, Chris and Kelly, if you feel that I should go ahead and go ahead and set up additional meetings for us in case they're needed, because there is a process to publicly notice, so I can go ahead and um, you know, put another several meetings on our calendars. If we don't need them, we don't we don't we don't have to convene them. We can just simply say that we we um, have completed our task. But I after our meeting today, I feel like we're going to need more than one more meeting. Do you agree? OK, all right. All right, good. I will go ahead and um, work on some dates and times and start that it is a bit of a process. Um, so we'll I'll go ahead and start that and can um, share those dates as soon as I can get them confirmed um, and make sure you guys know well in advance. As as well in advance as one could provide. 
I really want to appreciate, I mean, uh, share my appreciation with you guys. You've done a great job in working so hard on this, and I look forward to seeing you next week again. And thank you to our public for providing um, comments and questions that allow us to think um, think about this in a in a more um, complex manner. So thank you, and have a great afternoon. This will thank conclude you. our conclude our meeting for the week. See you next time.